Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel. This video came about actually because a new subscriber to my channel reached out and said, how do you use Oracle decks? And I was like, you know what? I have a lot to say on this topic. So I decided to make a video on this and put it up on my channel. This is a question that goes around a lot actually, because when we, when we look at the tarot, we're looking at a defined system. And so there's a lot of books on how to use the tarot. There's sort of a lot more common agreement on how to use the tarot because there's an established history and established structure. But when we look at Oracle and other types of decks, suddenly it's like the wild, wild west. And we're like, okay, now what? It's a, a wide open playing field. And so I have gathered around me, literally, a pile of different kinds of decks that I use in my practice. And I wanna talk about how I use them, how I use different types of decks, and the ways that I enjoy working with Oracle cards and other types of decks. So if that is something you are interested in, then stay tuned because I'm going to get into it. So I want to start with talking about the kind of decks that I think we see mass market the most. And these are commonly um, what I think a lot of us think of when we think of Oracle decks. So I have here the um, Hero's Journey Dream Oracle. And this is an example of a commonly available mass market deck. And these types of decks often have some anywhere between, I would say, 35 and 65 cards or so. Oh, somehow I have an upside down card. And how I like to use decks like this is in daily draws or in single pull clarifying cards. I would say at the most I would pull three cards in a row. So for example, um, I might pull these three cards for a client or for myself. One says, time for a quantum leap, prepare for a makeover. The next one says, divine drunkenness, surrender to your spiritual reverie. And the third card says, from fear to fuel, stand still and own your power. If I were looking at these three on a client's, on a table for a client's reading, then I would say, okay, all three of these talk about letting loose and also being really confident. Time for a quantum leap, prepare for a makeover tells me it's time for a leap of faith, it's time for newness in your life. And the same thing, interestingly, with divine drunkenness. There's spiritual reverie, there's this idea of letting go of control. And finally, we have from fear to fuel, stand still and own your power. So all three of these to me speak to taking risks, standing up for yourself, standing in your power, and trying something new. So I would look at all three and I would form a cohesive message across all three cards. And usually when I read for clients, I'll speak to each card individually and then I'll tie them together. So that's the most I might do on an Oracle deck like this. When it comes to a daily draw, in my personal practice, I always work with one tarot deck and one oracle deck. And every single day I pull one tarot card and one oracle card. And I use the two together to form a message. So for example, let's look at the Ellis tarot. And let's say my daily draw card was the justice card. And then let's say my oracle card for the day was you're in great company pull back to propel forward. So we know that justice speaks to equality, it speaks to fairness, and it speaks to looking at both sides of a situation. It can also speak to black and white thinking, that's what this specific card makes me think of. You're in great company, pull back to propel forward, tells me that maybe what you need is some perspective, and you need to pull back from the situation that you're in, look at both sides of the situation, and then make a conscious, mindful decision before you take your next step. I got that meaning by combining both the tarot card and the oracle card into one cohesive message. And that is how I work with oracle on the daily. But with that being said, um, decks like this that have sort of these more, um, how do I put this? So these decks tend to have a little bit more of a ambiguous message or they sometimes they're very direct. So this deck, you could easily work with one card and then jump off of what it has to say here. But I would also, for a deck like this, typically read the message in the guidebook, sit with it, and see with between the art on the card, the message on the card, and the message and information in the guidebook, I would sort of think about what jumps out at me from those three different things, and then tie that to my tarot card, and work with them together. When I don't often work with like a daily oracle card pull by itself. 
So that's that kind of an oracle deck. Another kind of oracle deck that I want to talk about is decks that I might use for, say, meditation. So something you can do with any kind of oracle card, but works best, I think, with more of these mass market styles. So cards, decks like this, like the Hero's Journey, why are some of them upside down? Peggy had to have been playing with this deck. Anyway, so, okay, eyes on the prize. Trust the guidance of your North Star. Eyes on the prize, trust the guidance of your North Star. You could put this out on an altar space or um, just prop it up against something and just look at this card and think about what it means for you so you could have an open, open-eyed meditation um, on this card. Another deck that I think works really well for meditation specifically is the US Games Messages from the Light Meditation deck. It's literally what it's made for. It also works beautifully, I think, in the other ways that I use Oracle cards. But so you might have a card like this, family, and you might do a meditation on family and what family means to you and how family is supporting you, helping you, or hindering you. Um, another really beautiful one here, abundance. And you could literally meditate on that. You could use these as focal points for journal prompts. So card contemplation. You could go, okay, this is calling for some quiet and some peace. You could use this as an action. Or um, let's look at another one here, healing. How and where is healing needed in your life right now? And you could journal about that or you could meditate about that. And I think for me anyway, meditating and journaling are interchangeable. So when I say you could use this deck for meditating, you could also use this deck for journaling. And I think that's true of any oracle deck, but I think some decks just speak more to contemplative, contem how do you say that? Contemplative, I did it. Contemplative meditation or journal work. And some I think are more um, punchy and direct and I don't think need, you need to go quite as deep with them. So those are a couple of decks that I see could see using with a daily tarot draw or in meditation or some of the, sometimes it's nice to pull a card and set it out in a sacred space or in a on a shelf in your home someplace you'll see it regularly and just every time you walk by it or notice it just think about its message so those are a, one kind of oracle deck another kind of oracle deck um, kind of along the same lines that I want to talk about are message cards. So here's um, here's an example of what I would consider message cards. So these are the Whispering Woods cards and they call themselves, do they call themselves anything? No. Um, it just says, be whisked away with these 40 cards to a place of calm solitude. Take a moment to reflect, be steered towards and inspired by peaceful voices from the woodland realm. So how I like to use a deck like this, which doesn't have a guidebook and it doesn't have different artwork, it's just messages, right? With a deck like this, I like to just shuffle them, pick a card, and read the message. Strength. When your roots are deep, you need not fear the storm. Now what somebody might do with a card like this is just read the message, think about it for a second, put it back in the deck, and put the deck away. What I like to do is I keep this particular deck in on one of my working altars that I, one of my elemental altar, stumbling over my words, and every once in a while I'll walk by and I'll change the card, which means I'll take whatever card is already out and I'll shuffle it back into the deck and I'll draw a fresh card and I put this right on my altar, and then whenever I walk by my altar I think about that message. So that's one way that you can use decks like this. Another deck that I use in a similar kind of way is my Guardian Angel Tarot by Radley Valentine. This used to be Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine, but it has been remarketed just under Radley Valentine's name. If I remember, I will link in the cards a video showing my... Actually, I don't think I did a video showing my modification of this deck, but Bo, Don Michelle at Boho Tarot did this exact modification, and it's stunning. Anyway, I took the gilding off, edged it in pretty colors. But this deck looks like this. And what I like about this deck, this is actually a tarot deck. The reason I'm showing it is because I use it exactly like I use some of those other cards. Usually nightly before bed, I'll randomly draw a card and I'll just read the text on the card as a little message before I go to sleep. 
And that is something you can do with text heavy oracle cards. There are several oracle decks out on the market that have a lot of words on them. And those are wonderful decks for just pulling a card, reading the message, thinking about that message, and then going about your business. And I really like doing uh, single card draws with decks like that. So let's talk about decks, oracle decks that you can use exactly like you would use a tarot deck. So I have one of those I would like to show, and this is the Roots and Wings Oracle deck. This is an independent Oracle deck by Kat Riles, and I'm just going to show you. This is what the backs look like. And then when we're looking at the fronts, you can see that there are single word messages, and those single word, not messages, sorry, keywords, single word keywords. And the keywords give you a jumping off point to use your intuition with the artwork and the keyword combined to get a divinatory style message. So to use these just like a tarot deck. Now with decks like this, my criteria to be able to use an oracle deck just like I'd use a tarot deck is that it needs to have expansive keywords. And I say that a lot in my videos and what I mean by that is I want keywords that give me a jumping off point that don't, that aren't too specific. So for example, with the Hero's Journey oracle cards I just showed you, the message is fairly specific, you know, Quantum Leap. Um, those are like it had a specific message. What I want for a deck that works like a tarot deck for me is like this is fire. This can mean fire, anything that's associated with the element of fire. It gives me a lot of room to explore my intuition. Release. Lots of room to explore my intuition. Same thing with transformation, right? Gratitude. These are simple keywords that give me room to explore and play. The other criteria for a deck that I want to be able to use like a tarot deck is balance. So I don't want a deck of just cards that are positive. I want to have a mix of messages. So in here you have cards like goodness, oops, there we go, sorry for the traffic. We have some really obnoxious people in this neighborhood with their vehicles. And then you have a card like blind. So this one looks a little bit less positive, right? Um, and then you have a card like storm. So in the tarot, we see cards like the Tower and the Ten of Swords and things that show the more difficult parts of life. To have an Oracle deck work like a tarot deck for me, it needs to have balance and expansive keywords. Um, so how I would use a deck like this is I would use it exactly like I've already shown with my daily draws where I pull a tarot and Oracle, combine the cards, get a cohesive meaning. Or I could take a deck like this and lay it out in a tarot spread, just like any tarot deck. So you could look up a fun spread on Instagram or Pinterest um, or on somebody's feed who posts spreads that you really like. And then you could lay out the cards just like you would for a tarot, tarot deck and read them. This can be really great for people who are intimidated by the tarot system and want to just jump in and start reading with cards. Oracle cards like this can be a wonderful stepping stone towards jumping into a cohesive system like the tarot. Now there are some decks like this that also have a system. They have cohesive keywords and they also have suits and things like that. But I think that for just reading divination style, I just want to have, oh and the third criteria I forgot. I like to have a good number of cards, usually more than 50. So 60 is 60 to 65 in that range is perfect for me. It gives me a lot to work with and shuffle through. A deck that only has 30 or 40 cards to me just feels like it's usually missing something. Um, that being said, there is a smaller deck, I can't remember exactly how many cards, um, less than 50 though, and that is the Oracle of Echoes by Anna Turian, and that deck is beautiful to use just like tarot. Um, it's got great balance, it's got great expansive keywords, and the artwork gives you a lot to lean into and explore. So that one and Roots and Wings are in my top for tarot-like oracle decks. Let's talk about a few other types. This is really fun. I hope this is helpful to people because I found I find oracle decks can be a really overwhelming kind of deck to work with. So I want to talk about my, I'm just showing this because it has the cute little pin. This is the Awakened Soul Oracle deck by Ethany. And this is a really, a really, really wonderful one that kind of crosses both worlds. So I feel like this one can be read with just like a tarot deck. I need to remember to put the cards in front of my face so it focuses properly. You've got great expansive keywords and great artwork that gives you a lot to play with. 
And I also think this works wonderfully in single card draws because the way Ethany has written the guidebook is really, really wonderful. So you could just pull a single card and read the message right before bed, or you could do it as your first thing in the morning or your last thing at the end of the day to reflect on your day. Um, but I think this deck is really a fantastic one for being able to either use it in conjunction with tarot, use it on its own, or use it in a more meditative style. Like look at a card like this. You could definitely sit and meditate with this or set it up in your sacred space. I think these cards are really beautifully illustrated and they're nice and big too. So if you set them up somewhere with the intent of walking by and thinking about that message, this deck would do great for that. So this is a really good all arounder. Um, and this is another independent oracle. I believe that there is a new edition on its way back so check with Ethany or check out her website if you're interested in that. But I really like that one for that. And then I've got a couple more interesting decks here that I use in ways specific to those decks. So one of those is the Oracle of the Radiant Sun. This was a recent reprint. Um, the version I actually have now was a recent acquisition. I was able to get the original printing back in my hands. I did have one originally, and if I remember, I will link up in the cards my uh, comparison of the original printing and the reprinting. The original printing can be really hard to find, but I did find somebody in my area selling this copy for like a steal, so I picked it up. Now this deck is based on astrology, and it's got the seven traditional or inner planets for astrology, and each planet in each sign. So it'll have, for example, sun in Aquarius, or is that that's Aquarius, yeah. It'll have like Sun and Aquarius and it'll have a keyword and all of this artwork. When I first got this deck and started working with it, I found that I really enjoyed working with this deck in a more predictive way. Something about this particular style of deck and the keywords felt more predictive to me. And I also really enjoyed using two or three cards at a time. So I would pull three cards and I would use them to sort of predict my day or my week ahead. So here we have impulsiveness, status, and order. So I would string those messages together and write a prediction for the upcoming time period. And I really liked working with this deck that way. Another really fun thing I did with this deck was pulled my own natal chart, my astrology natal chart, and laid out at least the inner planets, which planet was in which sign for me in my chart, and just took a look at the keywords associated, read the bits in the guidebook that had to do with these cards, and just learned more about my personal astrology. So I felt like this deck is kind of unique in the way that it works, at least for me. Another deck that I use in a unique way is the really adorable um, Anna Mantras deck by Katie Welsh. This is a little teeny, little teeny deck. Look at this guy. So little, those are the backs, and I edged mine in colors to match each. Let me back up. This is a card based on the seven chakras. So there are seven cards for each of the seven chakras. So I edged all of my orange or sacral chakra cards in orange, all of my red or root chakra cards in red, etc., all the way through all seven chakras. And I actually built a reading that I offer to clients around this deck because what I really enjoy doing with this is separating the deck into its seven individual piles, shuffling and pulling a card for each of the seven chakras and doing a reading based on someone's chakras and the advice they have for working with each of their personal seven chakras or my own. So I, I love doing this reading for clients and I also use this reading for myself and it's awesome. And really this deck, just to give you an idea, it's just a little, it's a little affirmation. So be zen, be grand, etc., all the way through. And there's animal medicine in this deck. Let's go into a different chakra here. And it's just, this is a really fun deck to do if you're interested in chakra work. The artwork is a little bit um, sweet and um, young for what some people might like. I love young feeling decks. That's just totally my, my thing. So this is perfect for me. Love it. The guidebook is great. So this is a deck that I use in a very specific way, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to show it. I've got a couple more types of decks to talk about. So another type of oracle deck you might see on the market is an affirmation style oracle. And sometimes, I mean, they don't necessarily call themselves that. You can kind of tell based on the way the deck art or cards look. 
So one of these that I think is does a beautiful, beautiful job is The Universe Has Your Back by Gabrielle Bernstein. Now this deck, here's what the backs look like. Every single card has a message and they're all positive and affirming. That's what makes it an affirmation deck. So this is like the give yourself a little personal boost kind of deck. And I find that these decks don't work really well for divination. I wouldn't be likely to pull this out to get, say, something to contemplate for the day message-wise or divinatory-wise. I wouldn't put cards like this into a spread like I would a tarot deck. I wouldn't even pull two or three and weave them into a reading. What I will do with this deck is pull it out for clients or for myself as a little final message or affirmation to take forward with them throughout the day or for myself throughout the day. And this is wonderful for that. If you're looking for a deck that you can pull out and get a boost of confidence or a boost of feel-good vibes, affirmation decks are fantastic. And you can usually tell that they're affirmation decks because all of the cards have positive messages and they are they feel like they're meant to inspire you in a positive way. They're not gonna call you out on your crap. They're not gonna help you uncover your shadow. They're gonna say, hey, focus on this. So they're really great if you're having a rough day, if you've been feeling stressed or worn down. Decks like this are really wonderful to reach for. But yeah, for these, I would typically just shuffle and draw a single card and contemplate that message or work with that affirmation. So affirmation style decks. Other examples of this type of deck um, that come to mind, I only have a couple. I have a deck from um, the universe, what's it called? Notes from the universe on love and connection and it's a deck of just messages on pretty backgrounds. Um, I also have, oh, another one, I don't have it, but um, another one that's popular is called Postcards from the Universe. And each card literally looks like a postcard and it's got like a very lengthy message for you to read and it reads like a postcard from the universe, kind of giving you a bit of a pep talk, right? So decks like that are really great to use in that way. I've got um, another type of deck here and this is an action-oriented deck. Action-oriented oracle decks give you actual tasks to do, uh, ideas for activities. And the best example I have of that is the My Quality Time Self-Care Cards by Deja Druitt. These are really great. They are self-care based activities. I gotta put it in front of my face, there we go. And they literally are meant to inspire you to do different types of activities to take care of yourself. So, flirt is about putting yourself out there, right? Um, catch up is about reaching out to a friend or a family member you haven't spoken to in a while. So you get the idea. This is all about things you can do to take care of yourself, to look after yourself, to put yourself first. So it's suggestions for activities. I like to shuffle this deck and give myself a self-care activity to focus on for the week. And so I'll pull something and maybe it'll be breakfast. So this week I'll focus on trying to make sure that I always have breakfast every single day. It's just a really great little nudge. And I don't, I think this is the only deck I have that's this action oriented. I don't feel like I need a lot more. Self-care to me is the only action advice I think I really want or need in my life. Everything else I can pull out of other decks. But this is really a different kind of deck and you may see other things like this out there in the market. Another deck that I use in a really unique way are these Making Magic cards. Let me not wave them around. So this is a deck of, this is by Priestess Moon. This is a deck of, it's, let me just show you. It's just like this little Whispering Woods, except for this has messages. And to me, this is about fo focusing magical work. And that is how I use this deck. There may be other intentions for it. Let's see what it says. Uh, no, it just says, this 40 card mini deck features a combination of medieval amulets, Celtic charms, alchemical glyphs, and sigils, along with an explanation of how each symbol can help manifest your desires. And it comes in a little flip up box. I use this deck all the time. If you have booked a client with me, reading with me lately, you've probably seen one of these because I almost always, not every single client reading, but really frequently, I will pick a card from this deck that I think holds the energy for the topic of the reading. So for example, okay, if somebody 
sends me a question for a client they want to get a reading and their question is about how to manifest more money for themselves how to go after that raise whatever it is that they're after i might grab this prosperity card and lay it on the table and set the intent that the reading help guide them in that direction but i also use this deck for myself when I travel, I grab, this, grab the safe travels card and I tuck it in my wallet. Uh, when I'm doing healing for somebody, I'll pull the healing card and I'll um, put that out on the altar with a healing candle. Perseverance, breaking bad habits. I have one of these cards set aside um, specifically with a crystal to harness the focus for my book project that I'm working on. I have, excuse me, I have another one set aside for uh, protection with a crystal grid. I have one set aside for a happy love and relationship for my love and relationship crystal grid and working. So these ones I feel like are really wonderful just for working with magically. And so I wouldn't even necessarily call this an oracle deck, but it is one of my unique decks that I work with regularly. And that's how I use it. Some other decks I would like to talk about are decks that I use either for study or to visually represent something. So one of those is this Crystals the Stone deck. So I never use this for as a regular Oracle deck. I keep it with my crystals, and what I'll do, this has a drawer pull-out box, is if there's a particular crystal that I wanna work with and I don't have that crystal, I'll use one of these cards to hold the place for that crystal on my altar space or for my working, or I'll tuck it into my traveler's notebook to hold space for that energy. I'll also sometimes, if I am working with a particular crystal in a client reading, I might pull its companion card and read the information that's on the back to the client, depending. Um, I might also use this just to read about the energy or the purpose of a particular crystal if I'm interested in purchasing it, or if I have it in my collection and I wanna know more about how to work with it. So I would say this is more of like a tool or a reference deck and not something that I shuffle and draw cards from necessarily. You certainly could. There's some wonderful messages and this deck actually has a little um, oracle style message at the bottom of every card. So you could totally work with it that way, but it's just not one I tend to work with that way. So that's another deck that I keep in my collection that I use differently. Another deck that is a really good example of a study deck are these learning card this is the learning cards series by living magic publishing and you can check out their decks on their website livingmagicpublishing.com they have these learning decks on runes astrology lenormand tarot um, and i'm sure a couple of other things as well but these are literally meant to be self-study flashcards. so the astrology ones for example give you cards that have the signs and then on the back you flip it over and it's got information about the signs so that's Aries, Taurus, Gemini, etc. So it goes through all the signs and then you also have flash cards for the planets. Wait, is that a sign? Nope, that's a planet. Okay, good. So you have Saturn, Mercury, nope, Uranus. I'm really bad at this. Neptune, I clearly need to work with these more. I haven't actually played with these very much. Um, and then you also have cards for, um, are these directions? Nope, types of signs, right. Cardinal, fixed, and mutable. Yeah. And then you also have cards for all of the astrological houses. Um, and then you have different kinds of other astrological things. So your descendant, your ascendant, your medium coli. I don't know what the IC is. What's that one? IC or nadir. Yeah, see, there's lots. Lots more. So if you wanted to learn astrology, this is a wonderful study deck. Like, that's literally what it's meant for. Um, and these are really affordable, if I remember right. You can find these sometimes on Amazon, but sometimes when they're on Amazon, they're not for good prices. So if you see anything that seems a little out of whack, just you're probably better off to order right from their, web, right from their website, especially if you're in the U.S., um, because I think their shipping is pretty decent. And these two, Jadzia DeForest and Jay DeForest, are who put on the Northwest Tarot Symposium in Oregon every year. So... Definitely check that out. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, yes, that's right. I was like looking down. I'm like, I'm surrounded by decks, you guys. Okay, the last deck um, along the same vein that I wanted to talk about. This is the Living Wheel Astrology cards. Oh, there we go. So these 
are also a really, really wonderful tool for just working with astrology. So these are by Patrick. I forget his last name. They just come with a little pamphlet. And these are, oh my gosh, my nose is so itchy. These are cards for the sun, all of the moon phases, eclipse, and then all of the planets. And then North Node and South Node, and then all of the signs with their constellations, and then all of the houses, and then you have the seasons as well, um, according to the eight spokes of the wheel. So you have a lot to play with. This is really wonderfully, wonderful, wonderfully, wonderful for visually laying out the astrology of the day. So for example, you could lay out the current moon phase, you could lay out what sign the sun is in, you could lay out anything else that you want. You could also lay out your birth chart and Kelly at The Truth and Story has a video about how to lay out your birth chart with these cards. Um, but these are wonderful altar cards or just for depicting whatever you're working with. So you could work with these magically, you could work with them as an astrological study tool. I will say that this, to me, this is a much fancier version of this. And this has more information in the cards and this is more visually stunning. So if you're looking for aesthetics, living wheel. And if you're looking for real proper learning, I would say start with something like this. But this is a treasure and I absolutely love them. So I think that, that just about covers it. If you still have questions on how to use Oracle cards, if you're still not sure or if you want to know different ways to expand your use of Oracle cards, leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. I like being creative with how I use my Oracle cards and often the deck itself inspires its use. For example, the... I know I said I was done, but I'm not done. <laughs> um, the Hero's Journey Dream Oracle even though it looks like just a basic oracle deck on its surface, the guidebook gets into how to use this deck to interpret your dreams. So there's different dream symbols you can work with and messages in those dream symbols. So some people might get a deck like this and use it specifically for their dream interpretation work. Um, the chakra cards, the animantris cards that I showed, these are wonderful for learning about, wonder, I'm stumbling over my words, wonderful for learning about your chakras and how to work with them. This might also be a really great little first animal deck for a child or a teen who's just getting into decks and wants to work with something that they're familiar with. Maybe they're into yoga so they know a little about the chakras and they want to go a little deeper. So sometimes the deck sort of teaches me about how to best work with it and I just roll with it and I, I use it that way. And some decks are just good all-arounders. Decks like the Roots and Wings Oracle or the Awakened Soul Oracle are decks that I could reach for in just about any situation and use it any way I want and, it, and have a good experience. So it just depends on what you're after, how you want to work with different decks, but I hope that gives you a jumping off point and some ways to play and expand. And again, let me know if you have any thoughts, questions, or comments down below. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!